Uh, like Kai said, I'm John Lee, I'm a founder, co-founder and CEO of Space Domain Awareness. My background, uh, I'm a, currently a, a, an officer in the U.S. military uh, with aviation background, a pilot by trade. Did some work in, uh, in, in usability and user experience research over at uh, Embry-Riddle. Uh, my co-founder, Ethan, is over in D.C., works in, uh, in the government that way. And then our, our engineer, Russell, is a... Uh, um, background of electro uh, engineering and, and some optics as well, which fits in nice with what what we're trying to do. So as as we all sort of have figured out, and, or didn't know beforehand, we know now. I'm sure with your many presentation spaces and be crowded, and work here to try to help um, the ecosystem uh, grow sustainably and be able to sort out um, and deal with the uh, the current and planned uh, increases in traffic in space. So. The problems I sort of bifurcated along two lines here uh, with for you being uh, pocket cube owner operators or, or satellite owner operators and for everyone, the, the commons and on, on the you side, um, I've never uh, commissioned a satellite myself, but my sense, uh, depending on what kind of your level of uh, support that you have when you send uh, your hard, hard, uh, hard fought asset into space, uh, it can be like everybody's sort of holding their breath, uh, waiting for you know for all your processes to work out and you to get your that that first signal down from from your asset to know that it, it was successfully commissioned and you're able to to use it for what you put it up there for. Um, and that's uh, it, I don't personally I don't think that should be that way. I think it should be a, a much uh, easier process and certainly uh, a lot of room for improvement there. Also, what do you do when you don't get that signal if your satellite happens to be either dead on arrival or just not talking to you early on? Uh, we found through interviews that a lot of customers are not happy with their current uh, TTNC antenna uh, or, or what, the, what is available to them on the market marketplace, as well as concerns with if I have a TTNC antenna, there's some uh, regulatory hurdles that we have to go over, whether it's the FCC or other regulating body, um, and then interference between the, uh, the host's main communications and um, not to mention just interference uh, within the atmosphere as well. And I added that one, that's why I just have a bullet point because I wanted it, I thought of it as I was listening to, to Cynthia talk is that, you know, they're, they're great and, and they, do, they do a wonderful job of, of communicating, but it's all uh, very manual um, and, and maybe they've changed and maybe they can, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but my sense is that you're sending emails to humans who are manually you know, putting you in an Excel spreadsheet. And, um, I, there's, a, there's a way to automate that and there's a way to make that less um, uh, white glove solution uh, and more uh, efficient because uh, as the traffic in space grows, uh, the 18th probably can't scale to meet uh, meet the growing uh, the growing traffic and um, is ripe for automation. So um, and then for the you know the ecosystem itself, you know, it's three kind of lines of efforts between accountability, transparency, and predictability. Meaning um, if your satellite's dead on arrival and your company's been out of business or you know you're no longer interested in your satellite and obviously pocket cubes might, might decay a little bit faster, but if, if your you know, dead satellite collides with something uh, in space and, and then causes a follow-on commit collision, who's responsible for that and, and who, who has to uh, the bear the, uh, the, the financial cost or, or any kind of cost with that, um, that action? Um, there is an inherent risk of misinterpretation of intent, especially um, as space unfortunately keeps, you know, it, there is likelihood that space is a domain for war fighting uh, yeah. between uh, the United States and, and, and other you know, powers out there. People are trying to uh, stake out their geopolitical uh, lanes up there, and there is the potential for a maneuver in space to be misinterpreted, uh, which could uh, be very... Uh, bad for uh, the peaceful uses of space and overall making uh, orbital domains increase the um, you know the, the goodness of, of life on earth which is what I think is the uh, the purpose of space not not necessarily for uh, for war fighting and then surprises are always bad in space uh, meaning if, if you want to know earlier rather than later so if you're going to collide with somebody or somebody's going to collide with you and uh, collisions obviously risk the ecosystem itself. So these are the problems that, that we've sort of uh, laid out here. Uh, and what we're trying to do is help to solve those with um, basically a small 
laser beacon that you can attach to anything that goes into orbit. And on the screen here, it's the Space Object Identification System, which consists of the miniature optical beacon on the left. In the middle is uh, what the ground sensor uh, looks like currently. And then on the right uh, is just a sort of a mock-up of what uh, where our, you know, our, our first uh, orbital test, where we're hoping to put it on board uh, Space Flight Sherpa to, to do some, uh, some on-orbit testing. The left most image, the miniature optical beacon, that's the current, uh, current version that we're using for, uh, for testing, uh, and then plans to integrate that much better into uh, into the satellite itself, and I'll talk more about that later. But um, think of a small, uh, diffuse, low-power blinking laser, essentially blinking a, a Morse code signal that says, I am who I am, uh, with the ability to interleave different uh, types and um, uh, different types of data within that signal. So for example, not only is, are you blinking the Morse code of, you know, I am satellite A from this company, you can also say I have an error code of A or error code of one, and um, I have a power amp failure, or I recently uh, did X, Y, and Z, or uh, you know I plan to maneuver to this new orbit uh, via you know, some sort of burn. So it's uh, these things that you can sort of interleave and um, essentially broadcast what you're doing, which will lead to that um, more transparent, more predictable ecosystem that I talked about on the earlier slide. Uh, the ground sensor, uh, I'll talk more about that in their slide, but essentially it's a telescope with a, for, a photon counter attached to it that is able to uh, basically do um, some extreme background rejection in order to pick up the, the wavelength of the beacon itself, and then it relies on some timing uh, considerations to try to, uh, that is like, able to uh, discern the, the signal from the noise and other signals and figure out who's who up there uh, in space. Uh, and the benefits here are uh, low to no power, meaning uh, our goal is to make this completely power independent, uh, as well as making it essentially unobtrusive to mission operations. So the, the feature, like I said, low power, unobtrusive, like we don't want satellite owner operators to know this is there. That's our goal is to sort of seamlessly integrate, provide a benefit uh, you know, a list of benefits for the satellite owner operator as well as for the ecosystem itself, providing that robust communication channel because being independently powered, even if your satellite is dead, uh, we want our beacon to be still broadcasting, saying, I am dead, and I belong to this person. Uh, and this is the launch of all, all this orbital data to increase and speed up that time for figuring out who's who. Uh, and then you end up with, uh, with more resilient assets that um, being able to have that robust backup communications channel uh, increases the reliability of, of satellites and um, making them less prone to error and becoming a piece of space track. So, uh, like I said, a low power laser uh, gets put through a diffuser, uh, has about 180 degree field of view, allows it to be uh, picked up from really any angle within the, within, the, um, within the viewing angle of the ground sensor itself. Um, and like I said, that uh, photon counter attached to this telescope uh, counts on arrival times, basically counting uh, zeros and ones to uniquely identify and basically decode the signal coming down from the sky. This uh, has been validated in ground tests, uh, basically from mountaintop to mountaintop. Uh, we are working to get it up into space, which is kind of the main point of this brief is like, where are we at? So we've done a lot of customer conversations out there. Uh, we've talked to uh, industry, government, uh, policy folks, uh, and um, try to get a good bead on, on what it is the marketplace uh, needs and what the marketplace wants. Um, I, Alba Orbital is uh, one of the early conversations I had with Dr. Constantinides there. Um, did a really good job uh, helping us out. We were uh, participating in the uh, Hyperspace Challenge last year where we, uh, uh, we came in third place for our trusted autonomy, basically. If you're going to have satellites moving around out there autonomously, you would want a way to uh, have a, uh, a verification of what it is that this autonomous satellite is doing uh, in a fast way for folks like the 18th to interrogate the satellite and find out who, belo who it belongs to, where it's going, what it's doing, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's history, basically. So you can quickly classify this is a threat. Is this not a threat? Is it somewhere in between? Is it a red, blue, or gray acid? So some progress. There's a mock-up of what, what we're trying to do right now. We have some uh, some funding uh, pipelines that we are uh, hopefully going to hear in the next couple of days about 
uh, getting successfully funded and launch launch this up, but basically integrate the uh, the electronics the, and the optics uh, into the satellite itself. So for a, it's obviously not a pocket cube, but the, just a, a one U cube sat between some solar panels. So that way, like I said, on obtrusive to mission operations, uh, we have not fully landed on the one size fits all. I don't think it's going to be a one size fits all. So we, we have uh, different options for different configurations for different customer needs. And um, that is uh, what we'd like to do. On our testing, I mentioned Spaceflight. We plan to put it up on one of their Sherpa as a free rider uh, and do some uh, validation from space to ground and then start looking for uh, for beta testers. So if, if you're interested in, in being a part and get some updates and you know potentially throwing one of these things on on your launch uh, for a minute for the many reasons I talked about in the earlier slides. Uh, we have a, a website which is more like a landing page but you can put your email in there and I'll add you to our uh, our mailing list. And then I'm also if you're interested in a feature requests or we're just talking about what what would work well for your specific organization or your specific needs? I'd love to hear that. You know, I, I I have no delusions that we are we are done iterating on this product. So um, the more people we hear from, and the more needs we hear, the more unique situations, corner cases, edge cases, all these things, the better the better it is for everybody. And then if you have if you know any friends that, that are interested too, please you know, pass along our information. Um, you know, this is just this slide just sort of shows where where we're starting and where we think these things can go. So we're starting with the, the identification and solving this problem of how do we grow the ecosystem effectively and increase reliability, resiliency. But we believe that uh, things like on-orbit servicing, uh, it, part key part of that is making sure that you're uh, connecting or docking with the correct asset. So um, ID is going to be really important there. And then all the way up on to you know, moving away from Earth, like how are we going to uh, identify people, identify assets in cislunar and cis-Martian sort of um, goal. So that's sort of uh, our future aims as a company. But right now, you know, it's, it's the beginning. So we're just sort of getting out of the gate here and would love to get input from uh, from all your uh, your expertise in the room here. Just a summary that you know we're trying to solve a problem for both business uh, uh, and the individual, uh, as well as the ecosystem. And you know, we'd love to love to chat more. Uh, so that's that's it for me. Uh, my contact info is there, Space Domain Awareness, John Lee, uh, and uh, look forward to any questions.